Welcome to the podcast, Mr. Yao. Yeah, thank you. Fasoya Yao is a politician turned film producer. He's a former Democratic Progressive Party legislator and previously ran for Taipei City Mayor in 2018. We talked about why he decided to switch from a career in politics to film producing. His film company, Tuan Daiwan, produced the documentary Subing the Revolutionist, and more recently the feature film Untold Her Story, that is based on a book by Cao Jingzhong and published in 2012. The book's title has been translated as Bonfire Island Untold Her Story. It is a collection of interviews of women political prisoners held on Green Island in the 1950s. Mr. Yao also shared about several of the upcoming television and film projects that he has in the works. I have a very interesting background. Before becoming a film producer, I understand that you had a career as a politician. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yes, uh, I'm, I'm uh, doing political words. Uh, uh, lasting, I think, at least uh, 30 years. I have been the congressman in Taiwan, and I have been the uh, cabinet, cabinet member in since the ABN era. And I was uh, a college uh, student. I joined the student movement, and uh, in that time, Taiwan had the longest part uh, role mm -hmm. in that time, you know. Uh, the KMT is the authoritarian region still in rule, and we want to uh, make Taiwan democratization and the freedom and the justice. So I joined the political world. Just want to reform democratic democratization, uh, make Taiwan uh, freedom. Uh, that's what. And uh, uh, you know, a very simple ground is to overthrow the game. Uh -huh. I think uh, I. That's what I want to do in my life, uh, to, to make Taiwan, uh, democratization, make Taiwan, uh, progress and make Taiwan, uh, we have a, a very cultural transformation. So, uh, now why I joined the film industry is, uh, because, uh, two reasons, uh, one reason is that I lost my campaign. You know, I lost the 2018's, uh, Taipei city mayor. So I think uh, maybe I should shift my life to make some efforts to join the, the film industry and uh, that Taiwan's uh, film culture have mm -hmm. some change and make, make progress. So oh. It's very <laughs> interesting to go from politics to film, right? So were you doing something related to film very early on? How do you make that? you know, decision to change, it's very, it seems quite different, right? P politics to film producing. I think uh, 2005 is very, uh, it's a very important factor. In that time, I joined the cabinet of Taiwan government. I am the director of the GIO, and we have a uh, concern about okay. the media, the film industry, and the cultural development. And that's why I, so I, uh, concentrate on, on this project. And, uh, I find, uh, although we have a uh, freedom of speech or mm -hmm. information or news, but in 2004, when I, uh, serve as the director of news bureau in Taiwan, uh, I had an opportunity to gain a comprehensive uh, understanding of the uh, media culture and, uh, especially film industry development. I believe that during the uh, process of democratic reform, we need to have a great attention to invest or to rebuild the film culture or film industry. Uh, I feel we, we need more uh, investment in talking about Taiwan's story, uh, to the young generation or to the world. So the idea, uh, I think in my brain is already, uh, mm -hmm. uh almost 20 years, it's already 17 years. And, uh, I think I always expecting some enterprise to invest Taiwan more, uh, start to uh, make greater progress or greater 
reform about the Taiwan story. Uh, uh, but I think very few people and a very few article uh, in this in this field. So when I lost Japan in 2018 uh, in Taipei City I decided, well, why shouldn't I do my, so I decided to shoot my life. So you saw that there should be some change. So if you think there's some change, maybe you can make the change yourself. Tell me a little bit about your background. Like where did you grow up? Childhood was like, and what you wanted to be when you grew up. Oh yeah. I grew up in Taipei in a very ordinary family. Uh, but I think I have a, uh, early understanding of the politics because okay. my home is also a drugstore. Uh, a lot of, uh, information, uh, come to the, the shop. And when I was a teenager, I came into contact with the opposition magazine, uh, of that time. And I have a long standing concern for media, information, culture, and, uh, Taiwan identity. So later, due to my role in, in the political position, I still devote considerable effort to uh, cultural affairs. Uh, so, uh, my political aspiration is to a reformer, uh, who can solve the problem and drive the uh, Taiwan democratization or drive Taiwan independent progress. I strive to optimize my strengths to make a, some, some effort or progress. However, uh, if that, uh, didn't work out, uh, I will focus on contributing to Taiwan society in the ways I believe I can make the, uh, a great use. Mm -hmm. I, I describe my political okay. career. Actually, when I joined the, uh -huh. home, or, uh, the, the political position. Yeah. I hope someday I will be made. Yeah. Because, uh, I, I really have a lot of, lots of vision, vision and, uh, a lot mm -hmm. of, uh, the problem saving way. Mm -hmm. I think all days, but I lost the campaign. So the second choice that, uh, that I want to yeah. check the Taiwanese culture, the way you should shot more movie. To reform the uh, film industry uh, to uh, make uh, more and more people to change their mind and uh, to country. It makes sense that film can be another way to impact society, right? And to maybe impact people's opinions. It's a, also a very powerful way, just different way. Could you tell me about the name of your film production company? It's Tuan, right? Tuan Town Film Company. What is the story and the meaning behind the name? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Tuan is Taiwanese. Tuan, Tuan is a, a, a spray. You no, know, the one talking the other, the other talking a ten talking about the, the one the hundreds, the thousands of people. And Tuan Taiwan means uh, uh, in the film industry, and uh, I think I can make a very good movie and uh, uh, thousands uh, of thousands of people to, to see the movie and uh, uh, then the Taiwan story spray all over the world. Yeah, that's Tuan. Uh, your podcast are talking Taiwan, right? Yeah, you know, as you're saying that, I think we have a similar purpose because, yes, we want to... Mm -hmm share more about Taiwan so more and more people can become familiar with what Taiwan is and things connected to Taiwan. Yes. I think it's just different form. Uh, yeah. That, uh, I think uh, uh, in recent uh, in Taiwan, I think uh, there's very few about the uh, uh, Taiwan right. historical uh, stories. Uh, so I agree. Uh, right, right. Uh, yeah, I see what that I a lot of your films shop. are focus on more historical stories. The first film that you produced was Sue Being the Revolutionist, which was a documentary. What was the difference from a producer's perspective between producing a documentary film versus a feature film like Untold Her Story? Well, of course they're different. <laughs> Let's play the, the money scam. <laughs> uh, the Revolutionist, uh, about the Su Ming is a documentary. 
uh, why anthropocentrism is a fiction uh, film that uh, depicts the white terror era in nineteen fifties. Uh, as a producer, the two projects have different requirements in terms of funding, especially funding. Uh, 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 production process is quite different, and goal uh, is not the same. So the former, uh, the revolution aimed to preserve uh, history, the untold history, seek to penetrate the, the mainstream market and reach a wider audience in theaters. And of course, untold, uh, very much expensive than the revolutionist. Uh, it costed 2.6 million and uh, the revolutionist only yeah. Uh, 200,000 mm -hmm. okay. uh, American dollars. Of course, untold, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it took the money at 2.6 million US dollars. It was not uh, an uh, orbitant amount if you compare to Hollywood. But uh, in terms of movies, oh. very, uh, it's mostly expensive in 2020. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's very, the most uh, challenging aspect. In uh, because uh, securing funding is very difficult uh, because uh, the the private investment, uh, they don't think the movie can uh, earn the money. Yeah. And mm -hmm. the securing funding, uh, crowdfunding and bank law and uh, get the, uh, the government grant. Yeah. So I have to combine the lots of funding resources to, to, to make the film happen. So can you share about some of your future projects? Yes, we have, uh, uh, we have the, the last, the uh, next one, uh, 残化, 残化, hiding the painting, uh, depicting the story of Chen Chengbo, the fame mm -hmm. and the value of the painters in Taiwan history. Okay. Uh, I think the, uh, uh, hiding the painting uh, is a is a romantic love story, and a very uh, historical of of time, uh, from uh, colonial era to authoritarian era, mm -hmm. and to democracy. This is a is a crisis uh, three period of Taiwan history. In 1947, around the time of the 228 massacre. Chen Shenpo or Dan Dingpo was executed in public at the Jiayi train station. Back then, the Kuomintang or KMT was an authoritarian regime, and in those days, they just did whatever they wanted to do. People were terrified about what happened to Chen Shenpo and so scared that they didn't dare talk about what happened to him or to even hang his paintings on the wall. People put away Zhang Zhengpo's paintings. His wife made sure that all of his artwork was well hidden away during the subsequent White Terror era. Hence the name of the film Cheng Hua, which literally means hiding paintings. The authorities did come around searching for Cheng Zhengpo's paintings, but his wife was able to cleverly hide away his artwork preserving one of Taiwan's cultural treasures. As Mr. Yao said, this film is also a love story of Chen Jinpo and his wife, who knew each other since childhood and grew up together. There's so much more to Chen Jinpo's personal story. Chang Hua is going to be made into a television series, and Mr. Yao hopes that it will be on Netflix so that people in the U.S. and around the world will be able to see it. Mr. Yao also spoke about his other upcoming film projects. And the next, uh, Taiyuan, 1970, uh, will be an action packet film uh, showcasing the spirit of Taiwan resistance. This film is about the Taiyuan uprising. Taiyuan was a prison. In 1970, several of its political prisoners planned to start a revolution in the prison and to overthrow the KMT. They planned to take over a nearby radio station to broadcast their message, spreading it throughout Taiwan, and hoped that it would inspire the people of Taiwan to rise up and overthrow the KMT. 
While some of the prisoners did manage to escape from the prison, the five leaders of the uprising were caught, arrested, and executed. When they were about to be executed, they shouted, Long live Taiwan independence. If you look into it, you'll discover that there's a lot more to this story, and it'll be interesting to see how it's adapted for film. Mr. Yao sees this film as a way to keep the spirit of these political prisoners alive and to let people know how hard-earned Taiwan's democracy was, with many personal sacrifices along the way. He hopes that it will encourage the Taiwanese people to never let their dreams of being an independent nation die. In addition, Mr. Yao mentioned several other projects in development related to the theme of Taiwan 100 years. One of them will be about Zheng Nailan, the founder of the Freedom Era Weekly and Taiwan independence activist, who set himself and his office on fire rather than be arrested in 1989. I'm also curious to know, um, since we're talking about a lot of these important historical events in Taiwan, were you or any of your relatives affected by the 228 massacre or any events during the White Terror era? Uh, my wife's family member were victim of the white terror era uh, and were, uh, personally executed by Chiang Kai She. Uh, you know, he, the, he, Papa Su, uh, Papa Su, the Si, Chiang Kai Su, Xia, Qing Xin Xia, uh, uh, the Si Gong Bo, Bunai Bo Si, Gai Zi Si, uh, so, uh, I mean, uh, executed by Chiang Kai She. The Papa Su, that Mr. Yao refers to means that the verdict was not originally a death sentence, but Chiang Kai-shek personally signed and changed the verdict to a death sentence, which is why Mr. Yao's wife's grandfather and uncle were executed. Both their grandfather and uh, extremely intellectual who tragically suffered such a fate. So the white terror period was a dark job. Taiwan history, during which many people lost their lives and the freedom. So these historical events serve a reminder of the importance of uh, cherishing and defending democracy, human rights, and the freedom of uh, Taiwanese life. So uh, uh, this, this my relatives. Yeah, um, you know I. Uh, I live with them, I observe them, so uh, 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 not only my family story, I think there's lots of Taiwanese, uh, they suffer uh, their fates uh, uh, from the to, uh, to now, yeah. So uh, I think uh, uh, that's why uh, I hope to uh, have some film uh, to talking about the story that uh, uh, next generation. Uh, yeah, you don't want the yeah. younger generation to forget because it, it's very interesting to think about it now. A lot of them were born while Taiwan was dem democratic and they only know a democratic Taiwan, right? That's quite amazing. But then they don't know what happened before, how we got to the democracy we have today, right? Yes. Documents like the Puaputsu were made public slowly over time, from the time that the Democratic Progressive Party was the opposition party. Mr. Yao explained that it took about two decades for such documentation to be made public and open to the public. Yeah, uh, uh, this documentation was uh, in public uh, when uh, DPP uh, is on position. Yeah, they gradually, uh, there's, uh, uh, thousands of the, uh, Verdi, uh, they are yeah. the, the yeah. Chiang Kai She himself. Personally. Yeah, he do this person. But uh, there have, uh, 1,000 or, or more, uh, people mm. was changed uh, their thing by himself. Yeah. Uh, you can see the, uh, you can see also in the, History, uh, there are some uh, changes. There's still uh, 29 people, whereas 
uh, excluded by Zhang Baixi. And talking about the film Untold yes. Her Story, how long did it take to make the film? Uh, it, it took two years to complete the film. Yeah, however, the, there were uh, uh, built up the, the foundation of the hard work of previous efforts by Cao Qinzong. Uh, they do the, the uh, overall history to interview the uh, political uh, victims uh, several years. So we know the history and a lot. So I, uh, uh, we revised the overall history to, uh, to shut the movement in the, it's very smooth and the rapid, uh, to, to, uh, to make the movie. Uh, right. So what uh, you're saying is that there was a book that the yeah. film was based on <laughs> a book that came from all of this oral history and the interviews, right? What yes, was the most yes. challenging mm, right. thing about making this film? Mm -hmm. Casting a pro appropriate uh, actor oh, is also a difficult thing because, uh, you know, a lot of actors oh, in Taiwan, still. they are afraid. They, this, they, they, yeah, yeah, they're still afraid. They still uh, cannot show himself or herself in this in this movie, uh, maybe to oh backlash uh, to gather some political yeah uh, yeah there'll be impact yeah uh, some political yes, yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's that's a, a, also the difficult things uh, so the money and the actors and uh, mm -hmm. uh, of course the other things too accurate accuracy is also uh, we are very uh, concentrated. Uh, and uh, so it, it, it will be, uh, in the production uh, process, it, it is a very hard work to check every point. So, uh, so that the movie, uh, in historical, uh, accuracy, uh, mm -hmm. we have no doubt right. to, uh, I mean, I think I read a uh, review yes. and they actually said that the actors accents were actually quite accurate. So this review was actually giving you some compliments that the actors did a really good job to portray the accents for the different languages and the regions or for that time period. Yeah, the, the actor is very good. Yeah, you know, when, when, they, when they started drawing the work, yeah, yeah, they, yeah. they learned yeah. The, the accent of language, different languages very, very hard. Yeah. Well, I would think that, like you said, the actors have to overcome some personal fear or reasons why they may not feel comfortable being in this film. So I'm certain that the actors that did decide to be part of this project, they have the passion and you know they really want to do it. Can you talk about where the film has been screened so far? We had a, a theatrical mm -hmm. a release in Taiwan for four months. And we have also been invited to scream at various international film festival and events. So this include uh, uh, screening such as uh, Netherlands, Switzerland, or Reese, uh, Austria, uh, Italy, South Korea, and Japan, and uh, uh, also United States. And we are also planning to showcase in the film during a summer camp organized by uh, Taiwanese Association, you know, July 1st. Uh, I'm looking uh, forward to going to see it at the Taiwanese American Conference East Coast, which this year is going to be at the Westchester University in Pennsylvania. So what kind of, what kind of reaction or response have you been getting uh, to the film? When the film was uh, released at the end of last year, uh, the audience response was very extremely enthusiastic. Uh, many comments and the review on social media uh, were very supportive of the people, uh, especially uh, in that time, Taiwan was in the in, uh, election era. Uh, so, so the political uh, uh, favor influenced many people to go to the uh, cinemas. So resulting in strong bugs of peace performance in 1922, uh, the film ranked third 
呃 ，in Taiwan's box office 啊，票房啊、嗯，是二零二二年第三名。In 2022, the film ranked third at Taiwan's box office. 算是呃，说、uh, so, although it did not break even, it was still because 那 the response means be 呃、uh, ，some people think is 太温柔了哈 ，to 呃。That's why we think we 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 need to uh let more young people uh to can see the movie, so it's uh uh minimize the bloody or、uh, the violent element, yeah. So it's very some people it's a man is very the gender and uh, oh feminist movie. Where is the film going to be screened in the future? I think uh the the upcoming uh really Japanese uh、mm-hmm. in, it will be happening next year, uh two thousand twenty four, and also it will be available to see in streaming platform、mm-hmm. uh, that in the website of Taiwan Plus, in in website. So, uh, I think two two eight of uh twenty twenty four, it will be released in Taiwan. Bonus, and so you can see、uh, from the website, and、uh, uh, you don't have to go to theater、okay. <laughs> and okay. website. So yeah, very important historical、yeah. date: the two two eight massacre anniversary. Is、yes. there anything else you would、yeah. like to share about、yeah. um, her untold story, or anything else that you're working on? I think the movie is talking about the Taiwan. And uh, uh, pop、um, will be will be spread、uh, all over the world, especially、uh, Taiwanese Asian. They can run the movie to to understand the history, understand the、uh, situation, and the、uh, democracy. Demo- democracy is not that easy. Yeah, the generations before us. Yeah, so hope everybody to see the movie and Taiwan、uh, in, Plus next year, <laughs> yeah, summer down. Thank you so much. I think it's really important the work that you're doing because the younger generations is if they don't know what happened before, they won't have the complete information to make decisions or to appreciate all the again the sacrifices and things that happened before to bring us to the community and the society that we have today. So thank you so much for your time.、Yes. And being on Talking Taiwan. Thank you for your interview.